This anime begins with a girl named Kotor Haruka, who apparently has lost interest in various aspects of life, and as a consequence, she sees the world in black and white. It turns out that since she was a child, she had the power to read people's minds. At first, everything went well because she was only capable of winning games like rock, paper, scissors, or guessing what her parents wanted to eat. But suddenly, she started revealing to her friends the boys they liked, even though they were too young to admit it. Because of this, they started calling her a liar and complained about her for telling lies. The protagonist's teacher called her parents to talk about this, since Kotora said so many things about the other students, leading them to believe that she was a compulsive liar. The time passes, and the protagonist's father starts caring less about the family and leaves all the parenting responsibilities to the mother. For this reason, she tries to get her daughter some treatment from a doctor, but all the specialists said to her that the protagonist is in perfect condition. Gradually, the mother's mental health starts to decline, and she even considers that some evil spirit is inside her daughter. She even has the desire to not take care of her daughter, but the final straw was when the protagonist exposed her parents' infidelity in class. This causes her parents to abandon her, and the whole class stays away from her because of her lies. This makes her feel destined to be alone because even the stray kitten that she fed was taken away. In the present, the protagonist transfers to another school, expecting everything to be the same, with everyone staring at her and thinking bad things about her. However, she notices a boy who completely ignores her. This boy is named Manave. He changed her world by not thinking about anything else, just what he says. The protagonist continues her lifestyle of pushing away anyone who tries to be her friend because they always think bad things about her. That's when Manig tries to get close to her, and he realizes that she can read his mind. Manig is very casual with the protagonist, but she keeps trying to push him away. Although she sees he's too persistent, she asks him why he wants to get close to her. Manig tells her that he has really no idea, so the protagonist thinks that he's just a fool. He invites her for being able to read people's minds, but this annoys her because that ability only brought her unhappiness. So she tries to distance herself from him even more. Of course, he won't make it that easy for her, so he catches her attention by thinking obscene things about her and she scolds him for doing that. But then she realizes that staying with him might be troublesome as she won't have privacy even in her thoughts. Due to her terrible past experiences, the protagonist cannot consider making a friend, but she keeps running into him by chance, so it gets closer again every time. This time, she saves him from an irresponsible driver and Manon thanks her. But she gets hurt in the process, so they go to the protagonist's house to treat her wound. The protagonist tells him that due to her ability, many important people have abandoned her, and that's why she wants him to stay away from her. Although she hates being alone or unintentionally hurting others, what she hates the most is when the people she cares about leave her. Manai promises that he won't ever leave her, and seeing that he is sincere, the protagonist can't help but cry at having a friend again. The next day, the protagonist wakes up very happy because she now has a friend, which surprises everyone in the class to see them talking casually. In that, a student named Yuriko comes to see them because she wants to verify if the protagonist can really read minds, and upon confirming it to be true, she doesn't hesitate to ask her to join her club, but she doesn't really ask her, she forces her to join. Seeing that Yuriko is taking the protagonist away, Mamek tells her to take him as well since he has the power to excite the protagonist with his thoughts. This scares the protagonist a bit, but it turns out that Manami just doesn't want to break his promise of never leaving her alone, so upon hearing this in his thoughts, she calms down a bit. However, the protagonist gets scared again when she sees the club room since it looks like a haunted house. The only person inside the club is the vice president named Daichi, because it looks like everyone else flood the club on the first day, so Yuriko locks the place this to prevent them from leaving too. The protagonist wonders what is the club objective, so they tell her that their objective is to prove the existence of psychic powers. However, the protagonist doesn't want help to make that happen, so the president insists on her joining. After classes, Manavi is not happy about the club because he won't be able to be alone with the protagonist, but since she's happy, he decides to stay in the club. The next day at the club, Kotora sees a sad memory of Yuriko, which makes her feel really bad for her. But it turns out that it was all intentional, because Yuriko just wants to expose the protagonist's powers, even if it means making her feel pity for her. That's why the next day the protagonist wants to skip the club, but she's stopped by Manave, who drags her there. Once they're with the club members, the president admits that it was her fault for letting the protagonist see that painful memory of her, so she proceeds to explain it all. She says that her mom had a power similar to the protagonist's, so she started helping the police. However, after a while, they labeled her as a crazy person and called her a fraud, which led her to end her life due to the pressure she felt. Mana realizes that this affects Yuriko a lot even though she says it's fine. The protagonist, on the other hand, doesn't want to say anything since she feels it's her fault that Yuriko has to talk about such a painful topic. 
The next day, the president has a nightmare about everything that happened, because they didn't believe that psychic powers exist, so she thinks out a plan to prove their existence. At school, she tells the others that her plan is to tell people's fortunes based on what they know about them, using Kotura's powers, but since the proto doesn't want to be exposed, she decides to let the president to be the face, while she hides behind and tells people's thoughts to the president. Unfortunately, since the protagonist has to hide, she can't correctly guess whose thoughts she's reading, and she makes too many mistakes. For this reason, she decides to do it herself directly. Immediately, she starts drawing attention from everyone because she accurately guesses things that no one could know. In one of those, her classmate named Hiyori comes to bother her. This is because she's jealous that Manabe is with the protagonist all the time. Hiyori starts insulting the girl in her thoughts, causing her trauma to resurface, making her vomit. In the following days, all the students start bullying her for vomiting in front of so many people, but the protagonist keeps silent. However, Manabe notices that she's acting strangely and looks like she's depressed. By chance, he sees a note stuck to Kotora's back which angers him and he asks her who is bothering her. She refuses to say a single word and leaves to avoid him getting involved further, but Manabe finds out on his own that it's all Hiyori's doing. He confronts her to make her stop bothering the protagonist. She gets upset since she doesn't understand why he cares so much about someone like her. It's then that Manabe yells at her that it's because he likes her. The protagonist hears all of this from outside, so she can't avoid crying to see someone defending her. However, she feels too embarrassed and can't look Manabe to his eyes. In that, Yuriko comes and has something to say to her, since she wants to apologize for putting her in that situation. The protagonist doesn't hold any grudge against her, so she asks her to keep accepting her in the club even if she's not a much help in achieving their objective. The next day, everyone starts looking at Kotora and Manabe strangely because of what the boy said the day before. But he encourages them to ignore it when others bother them as a couple. This makes Hiyori angry. The protagonist is the first to arrive at the club along with Daichi, and to pass the time, he thinks of inappropriate things with the protagonist, causing her to hang him for making such jokes. Yuriko notices that the protagonist is acting strangely because she heard Manabe say that he likes her. Though Manabe is unaware, the president tells him he should take advantage of it since she also likes him. As the protagonist is very shy, the girl lends a hand by suggesting that Kotor could prepare Manabe's lunches and even feed him like she does with Daichi. The protagonist feels embarrassed as she would never go that far, but she agrees to prepare his lunch and Mane becomes ecstatic. Later, Yuriko gives them their mission for the day which is to go sing at a karaoke, as this will help the protagonist gain experience for future dates with Manabe. Everyone cheers her on even though she has never sung before and she gives it her all at the karaoke. Unfortunately, singing is not one of her natural talents, and she gradually starts singing off-key more and more, ending up with a performance that's difficult to enjoy. After saying goodbye to the club members, Daichi asks the protagonist if he's only helping her as an apology for involving her so much the other time, but she tells him that everything is part of her master plan. The next day, Hayori wakes up super angry because she can't do anything to separate Manabe from the protagonist. The boys from her martial arts dojo are willing to do anything to cheer her up, so they come up with an idea of what they can do for her. On the other hand, the protagonist didn't prepare Manabe's lunch, so Yuriko asks her what she's doing, as everything is falling into her lap and Manabe would be happy with anything. The protagonist says she did prepare his lunch, but it was too embarrassing as she wrote love with the sauce, so she had no choice but to throw it away. Thanks to Yuriko, the protagonist realizes she's overthinking things, so she promises to bring him lunch the next day and Manabe happily skips away. Meanwhile, the boys from the dojo follow him, and when he's barely alone, they ambush him because Hiyori had falsely claimed that he was harassing her, and asked them to give him a little beating. Obviously, Manning wasn't going to stand idly by while they beat him, so he resisted as much as he could, but there were too many of them. The next day, Manning couldn't go to school because he was in the hospital. Hiyori panics because she didn't want him to be so badly injured, and now it's almost like she got him killed because of her. Meanwhile, the protagonist gets scared reading the girl's thoughts. Hayori realizes that the protagonist knows everything, and she becomes even more frightened, thinking the protagonist will accuse her. However, the protagonist ignores her and runs to the hospital to see Manabe. Luckily, he's still the same despite the injuries and Kotora is somewhat relieved, although she feels it's her fault that he got hurt. Because of that, she decides to distance herself from everyone, just as she had planned when she entered the academy. When Manabe was discharged from the hospital, he couldn't find her anywhere as she had transferred and moved to a place he didn't know. Days go by and Meneg starts acting as he did before the protagonist arrived, so Hiyori's friends encourage her to try again, but she knows that the boy is just pretending everything is fine. Later, Yuriko goes to see him because he hasn't been coming to the club and asks if he agrees to let the protagonist go. He tells her he won't go back to the club as he can't do anything to bring the protagonist back. 
However, the president persuades him with force since Daichi found the place where the protagonist might be, so they plan to go get her back. Mane revives the flame and anger he felt when the protagonist left without saying goodbye, so they all set out to find her. But since none of them had booked accommodation, a local policeman recommended that they go to the temple, where there is a monk who might be able to help them. Indeed, the monk welcomes them upon hearing their story, as it reminds him of a girl he met years ago, although he couldn't do anything for her because she was convinced that all the bad things that happened were due to her powers. It turns out the girl he's talking about is the protagonist, which surprises Yuriko and Manabe, and that means the monk might know where she is. So they ask him to take them to her, and he agrees since they seem to be good friends of the protagonist. On the other hand, she is living in her old house with her grandfather, who has a clear affection for her. Although it turns out he also thinks inappropriate thoughts about his granddaughter, so he gets very angry upon hearing that there's a boy who also likes to tease the protagonist with thoughts. The next day, the club members arrive at the protagonist's house, where her grandfather was already waiting to meet the boy with whom his granddaughter has been thinking inappropriate things. He is slightly disappointed when he hears that it was all in her mind, and he brags that he's already had physical contact with his granddaughter. While they both argue about who embarrassed the protagonist more, she notices they came to find her. So she runs away and the club members don't hesitate to chase after her. As the house is too big, the boys split up to search for her. While Manabe stays and starts thinking in his mind that he just wants her to come back as he wants to spend the rest of his days at school with her and the other club members. The protagonist can't help but cry upon hearing this, but just as she's about to reveal herself, the boy starts thinking that he also wants to punish her with a spanking for leaving without saying anything, so she rethinks her decision to return. In any case, Yuriko and Daichi were right behind her to catch her, and they start scolding her for leaving without saying anything. The protagonist tells them that she just wanted to disappear so that everything would go back to normal and no one else would get hurt, but this upsets Mana because she was not to blame for what happened to her. Then the protagonist's grandfather apologizes on her behalf, as she never had any friends so she just ran away when the situation overwhelmed her. The grandfather plans to make arrangements for Katora to come back, but the protagonist runs away again because she feels she doesn't deserve to return after what she did. However, Manami tells her that she doesn't have to carry all the guilt herself. Just at that moment, Hiori arrives at the protagonist's house to apologize as she realized she was being controlled by jealousy and regrets causing so many problems by sending someone to be a Manabe. That's why she wants to convince her to return to school, because thanks to the protagonist, she now recognizes the things she did wrong and wants to be a better person. Therefore, the protagonist has nothing else to blame herself for and returns to school again. Now Hayori starts defending the protagonist, so they also begin to reject her because of her sudden change. So she goes to the protagonist crying because now not only Manab despises her. Because of this, the girl joins the club to be closer to Kotora and Yuriko asks her what kind of power she has. Obviously, she doesn't have any power, but she tells them she can move things without touching them to try to be cool. But she ends up experiencing the most embarrassing moment of her life while trying to pretend to have powers. Anyway, it was all part of the president's fun, so they accept her in the club and decide to have a welcome party for both the protagonist and Hayori. Yuriko decides that the party will be at the protagonist's house since she is the only one who lives alone. So Dachi collects videos of people with psychic powers to have a weekend worthy of their club. Kotor agrees mostly because she can't refuse, and once they are at her house, despite telling them not to snoop around her things, the first thing they do is search every inch of the protagonist's apartment. Manev is surprised because this apartment is smaller than the previous one. Then the girl tries to explain that she did it to be closer to her school, but hearing this makes him so nervous that he distances himself from her because he doesn't know if he can control his thoughts. Later, the girls start cooking and Manad can't help but think thoughts when he sees the protagonist in an apron. So she tries to distract him with food, but Yuriko forbids them from acting like a married couple in front of them because it's not right to show off their happiness to others. The rest of the night goes as planned, although the protagonist falls in the middle of the night, so Yuriko manages to take a very compromising photo of her, which she passes to her to have a nice memory of that night. The next day, the protagonist can't concentrate because Manami showed her a flyer that Hiyori used in her dojo when she was a child, which was funny because it portrayed the girl trying to look tough. And that's why she misses the assignment of roles from the sports festival, ending up in the relay race. The protagonist asks Hiyori to switch with her because she has an even bigger secret than being psychic, which is that she runs slowly, but everyone already suspected this, so they completely ignore her. The protagonist asks for help because she'll be very embarrassed if she participates in the race, so the president tells her she has to train hard until the day of the race to be able to run with all her might and without regrets. Finally, the day comes, and it's the protagonist's turn, but she realizes the harsh reality which is that the others are much faster than her. But Manavi tells the whole class to cheer for the protagonist because she's a classmate giving her all for their class. 
So everyone encourages her, but this only makes her try too hard and she trips because she wasn't paying attention to the track. Because of this, the protagonist arrives back home feeling very depressed. Although the flyer that Maneva gave her instantly changes her mood, just as the boy told her. Days later, Hiyori interrogates the protagonist about her good grades, thinking she's cheating. It turns out that summer vacation has begun, and the only one who failed was Hayori. So she begs Katora to wait until her extra classes are over so she can join the trip they have planned. The protagonist agrees, and after she's free, they go to her grandfather's house, so everyone is very excited as they've never spent vacations with a wealthy family before. However, Katora tries to calm them down, saying not to expect too much. But from the beginning, it's quite different, as they are picked up in a limousine. The grandfather is surprised to see a new face in the group, but he learned about everything Hiyori did to the protagonist so he makes it clear that she's not his favorite. To have some fun, the grandfather planned a visit to an abandoned hospital where supposedly they conducted experiments on children with psychic powers, which excites Yuriko, as it's an activity that fits perfectly with the club. Despite the protagonist trying to change plans, the grandfather leaves them stranded there, and the president doesn't want to waste this opportunity, so she drags the protagonist by force. As expected, Kotora gets very scared, so she clings to Hayori, but this triggers Manebi's anger and tries to pull her away with all his strength. Yuriko tells everyone to stay calm because it's almost impossible for her grandfather's story to be true, and she doesn't believe in ghosts, so there's nothing to worry about. However, a chupacabra catches the protagonist from behind, scaring everyone, and they run forward without thinking twice. At the end of the path, everyone is surprised to find a theme park dedicated to Kotora, as the grandfather had it built upon learning that she would bring friends home for the first time, though he again makes it clear that he doesn't really like Hayori. The next day, Manid realizes that this house brings back bad memories for the protagonist, so he takes her to the beach to distract her, but unintentionally ends up annoying her when he unconsciously fixates on Yuriko and Hiyori's bodies, so the protagonist lets him enjoy the view and goes into the water with her float. When it's time for lunch, they notice that the protagonist is being carried away by the current, so without hesitation, Manim goes to rescue her with a boat, and when he takes her out of the water, she clings to him because she was very scared. Manim goes into automatic mode having her so close, so the grandfather tells him he's useless for not doing anything in that situation. After this, the grandfather invites them to eat as he hired a chef. While they are eating, the protagonist is away from them because she had prepared lunch feeling sad because once again Manavi won't be able to eat it. But as if he read her mind, he comes to eat from her lunch as something made by her is the most delicious thing he can eat right now. Finally, they start setting off fireworks and the protagonist realizes how much fun the day has been, believing it's the happiest day of her life, and she goes to join the others, but ends up falling. The next day, the grandfather and Manavi are very sad because the hot springs are temporarily closed, so they won't be able to see the girls bathing. However, their desires are not so weak that they'll just sit idly, so they start digging a hole to see if they can find hot springs. Meanwhile, the girls prepare dinner, and as usual, Hayori makes a dish of questionable taste. Later, the boys give up because they find oil instead of hot springs, so they start eating. Hayori then asks Manabi to taste her food, but he starts changing colors and gives her his own food so she can understand what she did. Both of them start feeling hot due to the hallucinations caused by the food, and the protagonist has to keep them in check to prevent them from getting carried away or worse. The next day, Manib gets a big shock because he wakes up lying between Hiyori and Kotora, so he imagines the worst, but he's not the only one as Hiyori also thinks they did something. But the protagonist clarifies things and scolds them for not controlling themselves. Later, everyone starts getting ready to leave as Hiyori still has summer homework to do, but the protagonist stays in her old room for a final moment as it reflects all the bad things that happened when she was a child. The monk is worried that she hasn't fully overcome that stage as he invited her mother, and she refused to see her. But the protagonist doesn't care anymore as she has people who support her and make her happy, so she can face the world without any problems. Once they return home, the protagonist tries to go out with Manic because there's not much to do during the vacations, but he doesn't respond. Also, on another occasion, when they are returning from the club, she realizes that he's thinking nonsense things to hide his thoughts from her. So she starts suspecting that he's hiding something, like a relationship. Yuriko doesn't think that's possible since they are talking about Manabe, but she's still curious about his attitude, so they start following him and find out that he talks to May girls. They continue following him and suddenly he disappears. It turns out he was dressed as a bear, but even so, his thoughts betray him when he sees the protagonist there and she discovers that he's been working these last few days. However, he doesn't say anything to her, making the protagonist leave crying and wondering what secret he's hiding from her. Nevertheless, the president tells her not to worry so much as he's probably just overthinking things. 
Back at her house, Kotora starts thinking that everyone is drifting away from her, just as her mother warned that would happen to anyone who gets involved with her. But her thoughts are interrupted when Hiyori rings the doorbell, needing help with her homework. She's surprised that nothing happened between her and Manabe during the whole vacation, although deep down she's relieved because she thinks she might have a chance. However, she regrets having such thoughts and feels awful about her feelings, so she kicks her head until she faints. The protagonist realizes that Hiyori still likes Manabe, but she still worries about her and not just her, but also Daichi and Yuriko. Some time later, classes start again and Manegu starts talking to her again, forcibly taking her to the club room as he had prepared a surprise party for her since it's her birthday. He wanted it to be a real surprise so he didn't tell anyone. The protagonist bursts into tears when she realizes that even her secrets were considered for her, convincing her even more that's where she belongs. Manabe bought her a locket as a gift, although the picture he put inside isn't very pleasant for her. She still appreciates the gift a lot and plans to take it everywhere. The next day, Manabe was waiting for her to go to school, but he realizes that he caught a cold, so he takes her back home, and everyone decides to go take care of her after school. However, it starts getting late and someone needs to stay to take care of her overnight. Manabe volunteers, but everyone refuses, thinking he has ulterior motives, and it would be like handing her to him on a silver platter. But he assures them that he has no such intentions, and when they ask the protagonist to reveal what he's really thinking, she says her mind is blank, so it turns out he was telling the truth. This surprises Manabe since he did have some lewd thoughts, but now he realizes she can't read his mind, and it takes away all the excitement of having such thoughts. So he tries to find another way to take advantage of the fact that she can't know what he's thinking. Just then, the protagonist starts sweating too much and wants someone to wipe her back, so Manami quickly offers himself, claiming he has no lewd intentions, but as soon as he realizes that she's actually going to let him do it, he runs away, regretting his thoughts. The protagonist falls asleep, and when she wakes up, she remembers that her mother used to take care of her like this when she was a child, which makes her sad. But her expression changes when she realizes that she's not alone as Manabi is still in her house and preparing food for her recovery. So she asks him to stay until she falls asleep again. The next day, the protagonist realizes that she can't read other people's minds. So Dohiori punishes Manabi for taking advantage of it and finding out first. But the protagonist doesn't mind and she's okay with him continuing like that even though she's already recovered because not being able to read minds isn't so bad. Yuriko tells Manabi that he should apologize to her for what he did. So she sends them on a date for Kotora to visit all the places she likes. However, they both are very nervous because they look like a real couple and people around them start talking about them. On their way, the protagonist sees a cute store and asks Manabi's opinion on clothes, but he doesn't hesitate to tell her which clothes would make her look more lewd. Embarrassed, the protagonist leaves without him noticing because she couldn't bear to shame. He finds her and realizes that she's genuinely upset, so he tells her to wait there and leaves for a while. The protagonist starts thinking that he stood her up, but it turns out he just went to get Takaraki to apologize, so the date continues, leaving what happened behind. On the other hand, Daichi asks Yuriko about her intentions for sending Kotora on a date, but it's evident to him that she just wants to make her feel better so she can regain her powers. She doesn't deny it since she needs her to read minds again to be useful. Their plan works wonders as the protagonist has a lot of fun with Mana, creating memories that she immortalizes in her locket and they both agree to do it again. Days later, a criminal attacks a girl from the protagonist's school, leaving her hospitalized. Meanwhile, Kotora had a case of anemia and was taken to the hospital, and thanks to that, her powers returned. There she saw a terrifying scene in the mind of someone from the area. The girl thinks it was just a horror movie, but Daichi tells her that it's probably related to the criminal who's attacking the area, which scares her because she was close to the incident and worries that the criminal might come after her. However, the vice president assures her that they don't know about her powers, but despite this, she is still frightened. She asks Manavi to accompany her so she won't be alone, and he gladly accepts, trying to keep his lewd thoughts under control, but inevitably, he ends up thinking something inappropriate. Later, Manam goes to prepare some things at his house before returning to spend the night with her. But Hayori predicted that something like this would happen, so she kits him and takes over caring for the protagonist. The next day, as they walk to school, the protagonist accidentally bumps her head into the chest of a detective named Aki, who is collecting information about the criminal. The detective is so absent-minded that she forgets about it completely, and her boss scolds her. He asks the boys for any information they might have and to be careful. In the classroom, Hayori talks with the protagonist about whether they should inform the police about her almost encounter with the criminal, but the other girls overhear them and ask the protagonist if she knows who the criminal it is. She distances herself from them because she doesn't want to talk about it which leads to everyone assuming that she is not acting out of fear and rumors start spreading. 
Later, the club gathers to discuss what to do about this situation, and the friend apologizes for bringing up the topic in the classroom, as that's how the others found out. Manu tells her not to blame herself as the protagonist would never do that. Yuriko asks if they want to catch the criminal to calm down the rumors, but the protagonist refuses out of fear. The president says it was just a joke, but Daichi knows that it wasn't really a joke. Just then, the protagonist receives a call from her grandfather inviting them to have dinner, so they all go except Hiyori, who decides to handle things on her own. At her grandfather's place, they all dressed elegantly, thinking they would go to a five-star hotel, but they ended up at a local restaurant and felt embarrassed. The grandfather takes advantage of their preparations and takes them to the restaurant in the hotel, but it's not as fancy as they thought. To their surprise, Kotora's mother is also there, and the protagonist can't even look her in the eyes because of the fear she feels. Her mother approaches and asks Snively if she can't talk to her. The club members support the protagonist, and she realizes that she's not alone and has overcome the phase of isolating herself. She tells her mother that she has friends now, and her mother pretends to be happy for her but warns her to take care of them or she'll lose them, which upsets Manabe, so he intervenes and introduces himself as the boy who will never leave Kotora. Her mother couldn't care less and wishes them luck before leaving. Manabe takes it as her approval, so he tries to kiss the protagonist right there, taking advantage of being in a hotel. Her mother hesitates for a second on whether to intervene or not, but her maternal instincts kick in, and she separates the girl from Manabe, although she doesn't enjoy acting like a mother, so she leaves immediately. The next day, Kotora is surprised to see so much commotion at the school gate. It turns out that Hidori has been arrested on suspicion of being the criminal. Manabe and the protagonist try to force their way into the police station to see her, but obviously, this goes wrong, and now they don't know what to do. They are treated the same way as the boys from the dojo, who also want to force Hiyori's release. The detective on the case allows them to enter because she wants Hiyori to feel comfortable enough to talk. Hiyori explains that she tried to stop the rumor herself and found the girl who started it. However, she discovered the girl beaten up in an alley and was accused of being the culprit simply because she was nearby. Seeing her friend in trouble, the protagonist decides to reveal her powers to the police as proof that Hiyori is not guilty. However, despite demonstrating her mind-reading abilities, the police cannot accept her testimony as evidence because it can't be proven. Yuriko becomes upset because they are ignoring her, just like they did with her mother. Realizing that her presence is bringing back unpleasant memories for the president, the protagonist decides to leave. Afterward, the detective tells Aki that Yuriko's mother supported the police but was abandoned when she was accused of fraud. Haki is determined not to give up and proposes to the club that they search for the criminal to free Hayori, and this time, the protagonist agrees. However, Manev is not entirely in favor of this plan as he believes it's too dangerous and feels guilty for causing his friend's incarceration. They have a heated argument and stop speaking to each other, but the investigation continues. Daichi and Yuriko ask the protagonist to rest while they continue the investigation to find the criminal. Kotobara feels tense as she walks home alone when she unexpectedly runs into Eki. They go to a park to talk and Kotobara reveals that her friend is like family to her. Eki is surprised to hear that the protagonist and her friends are still trying to catch the criminal to save Hayori, and she advises Kotobara not to expose herself to so much danger. She asks her to trust her to catch the culprit. Later, there is another incident involving the criminal, leading to Hiyori's release as it becomes clear she is not the culprit. However, the protagonist is still determined to catch the criminal, so the four of them continue their investigation and assume the criminal targets his victims in the commercial district. They decide to investigate there. The detective sees them hanging around the area and calls the protagonist. She reveals that they are still investigating, and the detective questions why they are doing so if Hiyori is already free. The protagonist explains that she has no intention of stopping. So the detective warns her not to go to a specific area in the commercial district, because that's likely where the criminal is. The club uses this information to set a trap for the criminal. When they arrive at the designated place, the protagonist becomes paralyzed upon hearing the criminal's thoughts, since it seems that Yuriko is the real target. Just when the criminal is about to hit Yuriko, Daichi steps in and takes the blow. Hayori tries to use her martial arts skills, but she can't manage to harm the criminal. The commotion attracts the attention of bystanders, forcing the criminal to flee. On one hand, the president feels incredibly guilty because Daichi got hurt due to her revenge, and on the other hand, Kotora blames herself for their injuries since she made the decision to catch the criminal. Feeling like she's causing harm to her friends, she decides to leave them behind and go off on her own. While walking, Kotora trips over a stone in a park and runs into Aki, who happens to be nearby. Seeing her fall, Aki takes her to her home to tend to her injuries. Meanwhile, Hayori learns that Manabe is not on good terms with the protagonist, so she goes to him to convince him to reconcile with her. She tells him everything that has happened and the protagonist's decision to leave, which upsets Manabe as he realizes he's been acting the same way towards her. 
Hayori points out that he knew what she was like from the beginning and still distanced himself from her despite promising to stay by her side. Hayori confesses that she has always been in love with him. This declaration surprises Manam at such a critical moment, but he rejects her feelings as he understands he should have never broken his promise to the protagonist. He decides to go look for her. After a while, Daichi wakes up and Yuriko apologizes for hurting him due to her foolish revenge. She asks him not to intervene the way he did again. Daichi refuses to accept her request because he believes she is not wrong in seeking to clear her mother's reputation. He promises to help her in any way necessary but also advises her not to forget her present by focusing solely on the past. He reminds her that she has gained many valuable friends in the club and doesn't want to lose them or her mother. Yuriko seriously reflects on his words and the vice president mentions the concern that won't leave his mind. It turns out that the only person who knew they were going to that place and knew about them was the detective Aki. That's why the president urgently calls the protagonist to warn her about the detective since they had been seen together. As Kovaru receives a message on her phone, she goes to check it and just in time, she avoids getting hit. Aki reveals herself as the culprit behind the crimes and confesses that she has been relieving stress by attacking female students for a long time, stemming from her unhappiness with being so tall during her school days. The protagonist runs away from the scene as fast as possible, although Aki is not too concerned because she assumes that the protagonist ran upstairs out of sheer desperation, leaving her with nowhere to escape in no time. Just when it seems all is lost for Kotora, Manem arrives just in time to save her. The protagonist tries to see the good side of the criminal, realizing that she has a split personality due to her traumas. She talks to her about her experiences with her friends, even though they fear her, and manages to bring out the caring side of the detective Aki. In the end, Aki surrenders because even though she accepts her crimes, she knows she must face the consequences. Nevertheless, her boss makes it clear that he holds no grudge against her, and they can still be friends after her sentence is served. On the other hand, the protagonist can return to her friends now that everything has been resolved. Days go by, and everything returns to normal. However, at the club, Yuriko announces that there is an important announcement to make. The club is going to disband. The protagonist becomes depressed upon hearing this, but then the president explains further, saying that they will stop trying to prove the existence of psychics and instead start a new club with the goal of having fun with people who have psychic powers. Kotora gets a little scared upon hearing this as Manami gets motivated to overcome his own thoughts and Hayori plans how to get rid of her feelings of rejection. Yurika decides that as the first activity, they will go to karaoke since Hiyori missed out the last time they went. However, first, she needs to talk alone with the protagonist. The boys go ahead, and then the president breaks down in tears because she wants to apologize for everything she did. The protagonist tells her that she doesn't read minds for nothing, so she already knew all her intentions but still chose to stay with her because she gave her a place where she belonged and could have fun freely. The girl is relieved to hear this and then talks casually with her and asks her to read her thoughts because there is something bothering her. It turns out that she was rejected by Daichi when she indirectly told him that she wanted to be by his side forever, so she is furious because it always ends up the same way whenever she tries to get close to him. Additionally, she feels envious seeing Kotora and Manabi together. The protagonist tells her that she doesn't know why she would feel jealous since Daichi has never told her he loves her and she wishes he would say it at least once. After leaving the karaoke, the protagonist returns home and is surprised to find her mother waiting for her. She becomes submissive and attends to her with fear of what she might say. However, she doesn't allow her to insult her friends or doubt their intentions since she knows them better than anyone being a telepath. They end up arguing until they are exhausted. Then the protagonist starts cleaning up the mess and her mother falls asleep. She can see the regret her mother feels for abandoning her when she needed her the most. She realizes that in that moment, she let herself be carried away and didn't see the pain her mother was feeling for doing that to her. So she forgives her and falls asleep by her side. The next day, the protagonist seeks advice from Hiyori on how to confess to Manabi, as she wants to hear from his mouth that he loves her too. Yuriko, along with Daichi, takes care of making sure Manabi doesn't interrupt his special training for the confession. Even the vice president gives Katora advice on how to do it, as Manabi is quite clueless and there's no need for something too calculated. The protagonist realizes that she just needs to say what comes from her heart. Finally, they have a date on Christmas Eve, and after having a great time all afternoon, Kotora confesses her love to Manabe. He becomes embarrassed and tells her that he hadn't realized he had never told her that he loves her too, so he does it properly. They officially start dating. The protagonist achieves everything she could dream of as she continues in the club with the friends she cares about and reconciles with her mother, who gradually becomes part of her life.